Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. Great to talk to you again. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done a show. Uh, I was basically settling down into our new uh, digs and getting our equipment set up and actually doing a lot of observation and and uh, also kind of looking back at the, the past and the present and possibly the future and I thought I'd kind of make this show a little bit uh, different and I named it kind of funny of how RVers should act and behave and what they should do and which is kind of a joke uh, and as you see so let's move on to our first module and we'll start talking about what this title is all about. So here we are guys, been a while, this is episode 81 and uh, really uh, actually very anxious to talk with everybody again. I've had a few folks saying, Rob, where you been? <laughs> it's like, sorry. And we have a lot of other projects going on. We actually launched another pro um, project or another podcast called Arizona Talk Radio and we've launched you know, the internet radio which sponsors this show which is the internet uh, radio shows called uh, Good music radio, <laughs> and it's a 24-7 radio station. Got to put a word in for that. But what you guys know, as we've told you, is we uh, are actually off the road for a little while, and we bought a house. And so, in the last, we've been here a month. And so, it's been interesting because, well, one, we had a lot of work to do, and, and we had to set up our um, our studio and our offices and all that stuff and kind of get a you know kind of get our pattern down a little bit and and a lot of things have come to light at least uh, during this time that I've noticed and because now that I'm a homeowner and I'm not on the road so much I still get all the information about what the other RVers and other shows are doing and but as time has gone on and I broke away a little bit of it, I've I've seen it in a different perspective. So I'm going to share that with you. And one of the first things I've noticed is there's so many shows out there that like uh, RV freedom and this is what you should do and this is what you should do and all that stuff. And so let's get the ground rules here. I'm going to be talking about things that people are saying you should do as an RVer. And I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, that's a bunch of BS. You need to do what you want to do. The other thing is that all these videos and stuff you're seeing are typically people that are doing full-time RVing and stuff and they're trying to do it for a living. So they're making YouTube channels to uh, be very popular and the better they are and the more followers and subscribers they get, of course, the more money they make. And then the other thing you're going to see is these full-timers and stuff. They're pushing their books and they're pushing their blogs and they're pushing products and they're pushing t-shirts and stickers and stuff like that. Are we guilty of that? Sure, but uh, not to make a living. So we tend to make the shows we want to make, whether they're popular or not. And yes, we pay the consequences for that. We don't get as many followers, etc. But if anybody can say anything about our shows, they can say that they're real, that they're honest, and that they uh, are to bring both sides of the aisle <laughs> to light when it comes to RVing. We have not always been proactive on some of the stands of some of these other shows, and we've um, observed the, the dark side of things and the great things. And so... Don't ever think that we don't enjoy RVing. However, I think the influences of some of these shows are um, kind of worry me a little bit. And now that I've stepped out, took a step back, I can see it even more clear than ever. 
of some of these shows and some of these podcasts, which are some of them are really, really good. Some folks that's they're concentrated on their channel and their products so much that they've really refined them and speak them out and speak out and they do their podcasts and they do their sharp as a, uh, as a whip on all this stuff. But you got to understand they're thinking about it 24 seven and it's their bread and butter. And so, yeah, they better be that way uh, in order to make their extra $50 a month (laughs) and maybe a few more subscribers to their channel um, and to push some of their books so they can have this RV freedom they're talking about. I kind of question this terminology of RV freedom and travel, all these things. Uh, uh, I, I... really love RVing, but the majority of the RVers, I'd still say 85 to 90% of the RVers are just people that RV for part-time and own houses and and tend to have a little better income. And, and that's it doesn't have to be that way. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying that um, if you go to RV parks, you will meet full-timers and you will meet full families and you will meet singles and partners out there that are RVing. And yes, they have loud voices, they have flags and stickers and 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 uh, video shows and, and blogs and books and all that stuff, but they're just trying to find a way to stay out there to be this freedom person traveling all the United States uh, to make it all work. And so I want to kind of talk about some of that stuff and some of the observations I've seen in the last month or so that I probably wouldn't have noticed before. So one of the things I got to do is is point out some of my observations I've had since I've been off the road. Now, we still have our RV and we're still going to use it and it's all coming up, but we haven't done any shows on that lately because actually one is I've been doing a lot of cooking, if you ever noticed, with our trigger. So I've Put that, I've been putting out a lot of uh, uh, videos on cooking with the Traeger grill. And so uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. And the season right now, we're getting ready to um, move the boat up to uh, Lake Powell in a few months. And then with the RV, we're not sure what uh, exactly how we're going to interact with that yet. But it's, it's, it's coming. So be patient with us. So, uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I haven't been in a hurry to do an RV talk radio because the fact that I haven't really been out in the RV much, but I'm still involved in it. We're still going out and checking on it and, and taking care of it. And remember, we got an RV that's stored, stored down here in Arizona. So there's little things that we've had to do with the RV while it's sitting there that's a little different. We keep uh, our sinks full of water. So actually, before I put it in storage, I filled the tank of the water system totally full. Because every time we go there, every two weeks or so, we go up there and we actually fill the sinks up with water. And uh, so there's moisture still in the air uh, inside the RV during these warm temperatures. And actually, it's um, March right now. We've actually got some really warm temperature here in the last uh, couple of weeks. And that's unusual. So, yeah. Um, But, yeah. So... We are still dealing with RV issues, even though we're not living in one. But I wanted to point out some of the biggest observations I made since we are not full-time RVers anymore. And we did it for 18 months. And now we're in a house. And so, uh, wow, there's a couple of things I kind of forgotten about. Good, bad, or indifferent. And I'd like to kind of point some of them out so you might get a kick out of it. So I think one of the first things I noticed right away is having elbow room and the fact that, you know, we've told our story a little bit and, and, it, and it ha- we have a lot of history about why it was so important for Sherry and I get back into a household. So it was very special to us and it hasn't set in yet. Um, what Sherry described it is the honeymoon's not over yet. Uh, we haven't, you know, it just, it's hard to believe we've actually gotten back into a home and we're so pleased. But one of the things we've noticed for sure is having room. And so first thing is the biggest thing that's been great is uh, our pets. Uh, our cat is uh, on cloud nine. I, I swear she's on in every cupboard, on top of every cupboard. Um, she's a very happy cat. Cinder, now some of you who may have seen pictures of our house, we actually have a pool. Doesn't make us rich or anything. Don't, don't get the wrong idea. 
So I'm pretty sure that we bought the house for the cat and we bought the pool for the dog. Uh, Cinder loves the pool and she has her own backyard now. She's never had one before because even before the RV, we were in an apartment. So we were always, everything she always had to do had to have a leash on. Now she can go in her own backyard and get in trouble. And uh, so, yeah, she's uh, uh, been very healthy for the pets. And of course, Sherry and I, I think the biggest thing that really stands out right off the bat is a good, long, hot shower. (laughs) And not a shower where you go in and you go, I wonder who was in here last time and has this place been clean lately and all that stuff. It's like, we we know the answer to that because it's our house. And so I got to tell you, the the biggest thing right off the bat was... uh, uh, the showers and and be able to take a hot bath if you want to. You've got some sore muscles and stuff. Or, by gosh, uh, that's that's wonderful. And uh, so yeah, those are two things that really stood out from getting off the road. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the space uh, because we have a business and and activities we do with uh, v- making videos and stuff. And remember, this isn't the only thing we do. We have the Arizona Talk Radio. We also have a a puppet thing that you know we did some experimental uh, videos on this channel with our puppets and stuff but it's now branched off into its own show called the turds <laughs> and it's spelled t-e-r-d-s and we just thought that would be a funny name because uh we don't joke about it but it's a weird name so people are going really that's really your last name so anyway it was kind of a fun name to use and so uh anyway so we have a show totally about puppets and it has uh, morals to it and songs and, and it's just a, a fun thing to do and it's probably more of a younger generation thing and we enjoy doing it but it has a, adult jokes in it and stuff too anyway so having the studio now is great because now we got all this room to work and that's been really nice because as you know in an RV if you pull stuff out you need to put it back when you're done and it just gets so you get to a point sometimes you just don't want to work on anything because it's so much of a hassle to pull everything out and pull everything back and also cooking i don't know what's wrong with me but um i really have enjoyed cooking more because of having the tools and a room to work uh to be able to clean my dishes and to uh um, have the kind of dishes i want to deal with to cook the kind of things i like to do and that's with the traeger and so uh, these are just the little things that really stood out. Um, now, when it comes to money-wise, um, I think it hasn't been that much of a shocker because when you really play the numbers, it might be a couple hundred dollars a month more. But we're also finding ourselves not leaving that often and trying to entertain ourselves because we have, you know, we've set up our household with entertainment systems and and projects that we want to do and cooking and then having family over what a wonderful thing and and one of the observations i made was when the family came over when we were in the rv the rv like our fifth wheel was really designed for me and sherry so when you introduce more people to it it's just not comfortable and so um now when we have the kids over and stuff the kids have things they got to do. They have a pool in the backyard to play in. And it's really changed our relationship with the grandkids. Is they're not coming into this futuristic fifth wheel thing in an RV park that's not really kid friendly. Where we've created our house where it is kid friendly and pet friendly and the whole works. So it's really been good for family. And so uh, uh, those are really things that have stood out. And so... Uh, Uh, Yeah, I just kind of wanted to point some of that stuff out. The other thing I noticed coming off the road is junk mail. Oh, my gosh. You know, because we used to have all of our mail go to a uh, mail stop up up in Washington State. And so, really, we just only got practical mail that we either had invoicing out and checks coming in from our business and things like that, general uh, things for insurance, all that stuff, and then we'd have it forward every two, three weeks. Boy, I tell you, once you get into a home and you're registered on a mail thing, I, I, I've gotten more junk mail and then probably in, a, than, in the last month than I've gotten 
in the whole 18 months that we're full-time RVing. <laughs> so truly amazing. So uh, luckily that's recyclable. So we are trying to make sure that all that junk mail we do get goes at least into a recycle system. So uh, um, we uh, don't feel like I'm just, I just hate throwing all that stuff in the garbage and say, what a waste of paper. So yeah, those are some of the big observations. So the other day I was going through Facebook and I saw a post come from one of the groups that we're in and I showed a picture of these RVs I swear were only three feet of distance between each of them. I mean parked side by side and of course I mean the first thing I got to do is write a code in there and probably made somebody mad and I go well that really makes you want to be an RVer and of course the comments come in and it's and I just I mean People, there's just so much trying to tell you about how RVing is so perfect. But a lot of people don't understand that sometimes, a lot of, well, a lot of times, people are stuck at the places that they're at because they're there for a purpose. And so when an RV park puts you in such tight quarters, and uh, of course the, the, the comments I was seeing is, well, you can always move. That's what's really good about being an RVer. If you don't like your neighbor, you can move. Well, it's not quite that easy. And of course, you know, if you're there for a couple of months for a job or contract work, or you're there um, down here in the summer in Arizona to just say, I want to move is not uh, always plausible due to the fact that it is very popular down here to be down here in your RV and good luck finding a new space and so they'll just say well sorry we don't have anything for you either you know deal with what we gave you or go try to find another rv park which is not so easy to do down here during the season in arizona so comments like that you need to shrug off when someone says oh rving that's part of the, the benefits of being an rv or you can just move that's not a true statement uh and in some cases, if you're, you know, leave and boondock and do things like that, you have a little bit more flexibility, but you also don't have utilities and you have to live a little different when you're off the, uh, when you're off the grid. So I felt that I felt, uh, I, I found that quite amusing and, and got a kick out of watching all that. But, uh, uh, it's kind of like everybody trying to convince themselves what they're, you know, what you're doing is like, so the. The title of the show was saying, you have to do this. You have to behave this way. You have to do that. And that's not true. So the show is all about what that title is not really meant to be. It was, it was, this, uh, it was written to get your attention. But what we're trying to do is make it clear to you that RVing is different for everybody. And not one size fits all. And I, I also, I get a kick out of uh, some of these shows. Like I was watching a, a live show by, uh, what was it, that uh, family group uh, podcast. Um, uh, at, um, anyway, I, I forgot the name of their show, but I try to catch their show a little bit and stuff. But it's so pure, 100% RVing is everything in the world kind of show that I get kind of tired of it real quick. So anyway, when they're doing this live show, I, I, I make sure I'm on my RV Talk radio um, side of the house and I go in there and I say, oh, hello, I really enjoy your show. Well, they're answering questions from all the, the live feed they're getting, but they ignored everyone that I did. It's like, are you kidding? Are you so deep into what you do? You, you can't say hello. You can't... Uh, uh, you know, I in a court, I made sure that everything I said was cordial, polite, and nice and complimentary, and they totally ignored everything. So I switched over to a, a RV Travel Buddy, and I, I shot a note across saying, "Hey, I really enjoyed your show. You have a great podcast." And of course, all the other stuff coming in, they answered and said hello, everybody, and skipped mine. And it's like, all right, I'll try one more on Outdoor Travel Channel. <laughs> so, hey, I love your show. You guys are great. Uh, hello, oh, they, and they ignored it. And you could see their eyes kind of open up a little bit like, what was that? Like competition. It's like, guys, they're so, f I mean, they've got so many more followers. They've got those stringent RVers following them. And RVing is the only thing in the world that uh, those people think about. 
And so I'm no threat to them. Anyway, and I still, even though that they did that to me, uh, I still compliment them. They put on a great show. They have some great products. They write some great articles. They're really into the RVing lifestyle 100%. Um, and they got kids on the road kind of thing. And so power, you know, power to them. And I really hope them the best. Um, and it's too bad that they couldn't recognize that, uh, you know, we were just trying to be friendly and we really do hope the best for them and Higgins and all those folks that do these shows. They uh, have devoted their lives to RVing and being on the road and their, uh, what they would call the RV freedom. And uh, they probably, you know, I'm sure I shake their ears a little bit because I'm saying that is beautiful stuff, but there is more to life than that. And it's not the full story. And so you got to remember that these guys are creating uh, the perfect vlogs or and, and podcasts that they can because it's their livelihood and they're creating books and articles and stuff because they can make money off of them. And that's important. And, and to be on the road and be uh, especially not retired and uh, you've got to uh, either do work camping or have a, a virtual job like a, uh, RV Freedom folks, uh, he, uh, he does uh, works for a company that he can do virtual work, not available to a lot of people, or you've got to create products and services on the road that people may actually want or have to help protect, uh, support their same hobby or their same interest. So uh, they're doing a great job at that, and, and I tip my hat to them. Um, the... Uh, other podcasts are out there, just great stuff. Um, anyway, and and thumbs up. And all we are presenting is we're just bringing up the facts of most RVers. I still say eighty five percent or better are not your full time RVers. They're just RVers uh, and part time. Um, they're not out there trying to make a living. <laughs> in their RV they're using their RV because it's comfortable and and most RVers do not have podcasts and most RVers do not have video channels they're just RVers <laughs> that's the truth that's real and so I don't care how many of these shows you watch and stuff the majority is your typical working couples or even when they're retired they're still going home to their houses uh, when the weather's better so that's reality take it or leave it that's just how it is out there so don't let them fool you that everybody's selling their houses and hitting the road and going out to the rv freedom because that's not a true statement so what are some of the things that we miss about being uh you know not being on the road and I've got to tell you that some of the con things I've read and been seeing are, are not necessarily true in one world and not the other. For example, they say, well, our veers are the friendliest. Well, I got to say that the new neighborhood that we just moved into, I've actually met some really nice people <laughs> and they've actually made uh, an effort to come to my door and say hello. Um, and uh, yeah, I just and at the same time at an RV park so I think one of the things you notice the most when you're an RVer is because instead of going insane by living in a small area you tend to go outside more to get that open space feeling so you do end up saying hello and meeting more people uh, but I can tell you that you know gossip and, and talk is just as bad whether it's in a household or the RV park. For example, uh, Sherry and I, uh, we did not tell the RV park that we bought a house. How and However, over time, people that we've met and known the stuff, uh, we have told, uh, told that, yeah, we bought a house, we're waiting for it to close, and we're going to probably... Uh, uh, be leaving this park pretty soon. Well, in, uh, in Arizona, you know, it's hard to get a new place to stay uh, because it's so popular. So 
What I didn't know about was uh, towards the last day or two before that we went to the office to declare that we are not going to stay. Uh, we had reservations for the whole year, basically. She go, the girl, which is a real nice gal, the first thing she goes is, are you, did you guys buy a house or something? And I'm going, I never told her. I, I was like, uh, yeah. Well, I knew something was up because people in the RV park have been calling us about your space and said that you'd be buying a house and, and that was going to open up. And I just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> It's like, wow, this is just as bad as being in a house. I mean, it's like, uh, yes, people watch you. Yes, people talk about you. Yes, people gossip. And uh, I don't care if you're in an RV park or if you're in a, uh, a neighborhood. Uh, some things never change. And that was one of them. That one really shocked me. And uh, so uh, I I do find that I'm fixing things just as much here as I am a, when I was in an RV. There's little things that, you know, like, ugh, you know, especially if you buy a house that's not new. Uh, if you buy a new house, you still got things you got to put together. And it's no different than a new RV. So, yeah, but one of the things I got a kick out of was the fact that is, <laughs> is yes, you do meet more people when you're RV because you tend to go outside to get that elbow space. Um I probably notice sunsets and, and things in the sky or, or um, nice visual effects a little more when I was an RVer because you tend to go outside just get a, you know, get out of the RV and feel like you're not living in a cave. And I, I can just imagine what it's like to be in an RV when there's really bad weather and you're stuck inside that RV. Uh, that'll drive me crazy. Cause I'm not the kind of person that sits back and reads a book all day. I can't do it. My wife could do it better than I can, but I can't do it. So me being in an RV in a small space tends to get in my uh, nerves a little bit. So I'm kind of glad to have the extra elbow room. But yeah, I do miss that about RVing uh, when you're full-timing is meeting so many different people all the time. I, I got a kick out of that. Of course, the other thing that people say, well, isn't your cost gone up a little bit and I have to say yes in some areas and down in others. I found that when we were RVing we wanted to escape the RV a lot and the more the longer we were in the RV the more we wanted to escape it. So we tend to do more road trips, we tend to go places, maybe go to the casino more, uh, go out to dinner more and so I think it all kind of equalized out a little bit. Um, we don't feel that need to go to the casino uh, that much and we don't feel that need to eat out so much because we've got you know some great things here and then also we have family and, and stuff like that where you can get togethers and so we keep it pretty busy we haven't even done a road trip lately so i promise you uh, on outdoor travel channel there will be more road trips coming up there is boating and fishing coming up it's just right now in this transition uh period and uh uh, there will be more RV talk radio shows. I can't keep, I can't help myself. Uh, I think I'm going to spread them out a little more. Uh, I, uh, I need to, we don't have the plan yet of what, how we're going to use our RV. We may put it over at Lake Havasu and leave it there for a vacation getaway. Um, we may actually even modify it and get a different kind of RV. Uh, it's hard to say. And we're kind of underwater in this RV because of the way we bought it four years ago, three years ago. And so uh, it may make more sense to trade it in uh, than because I can't sell it for what we owe on it. So it's just, and, and I think the Higgins were talking about that same problem on their show. And so, yeah, um, uh, got some decisions to make on how to deal with the RV and what we're going to do with it. Now, we thoroughly enjoyed before doing extended RVing where we, uh, when we're, before we hit the road, I was working at my job. I had a job, Sherry, too, and we kept the RV up in Anacortes. You know, go back in the past, you'll notice we did a lot of videos in Anacortes. Is every weekend we go up to Anacortes because our RV was there, set up, all comfy and ready to go, and uh, sitting at an RV park uh, near the water. And we may do something like that. Heck, we might even put the RV over in San Diego. Who knows? Uh, hard to say, but the other thing that complicates it a little bit is we have a boat too. So we'll probably use the boat during the summer because you want to, in Arizona, you want to 
Uh, when it gets really hot, you only get caught or have to stay in your house all the time. So a good way to get relief from the heat is to go north. So that's what we were doing a little bit last year is we go up. The boat's already up there at Lake Powell set up. You can sleep in it and enjoy a three or four day weekend in cooler weather and get out of the 110 degree weather that you have for about three months here. And a lot of people say, oh, it's just terrible to have to be in that hot weather. Well, you got to remember, it's really only three months of that. And the rest of it's like 90, uh, nine months of nice summer weather with a few little monsoons here and there. Um, but wow, I mean, it's really neat weather. And um, it's nice down here a lot because one thing I really enjoy is to be able to eat outside. <laughs> and almost every restaurant down here in Arizona is typically those you can eat outside and be actually pretty comfortable there's only a few weeks that you know you might want to wear a sweater or something like that but uh there's some real benefits about this nice weather down here so it's 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 not tropical it's that dry heat they tell you about no humidity really nice and so yeah if you get a chance to visit arizona first of all look us up we'd love to hear from you and two, we'd love to, you know, maybe go meet you for lunch or coffee or dinner or something like that. We've met some really nice people and we've uh, got some really good friends down here that we've met through RVing. And Arizona is a really nice place to, uh, uh, to enjoy and it's not a bad place to live. So, yeah. So here's another myth that me... Uh, uh, go through your head once in a while it's like well you know when you're an rv or you have a freedom you're not judged that much or people are, uh, are more accepting and it's like well that's not necessarily true for example when we first got here in the house and meeting some of the neighbors one of the first neighbor you know, one of the first well not one of the first but one of the people who we met first thing they asked and it was that bombshell that we always dread is oh well where do you go to church and it's like oh now, I'll tell you right now, we're Christians and Protestants. We're very uh, much uh, believers. And uh, however, we don't go to a church on a regular basis. Nothing against it. Not the whole works. It's just not our cup of tea. But I immediately saw, after I said that, a uh, cringe on their part saying, oh, you're one of them. <laughs> it's like, well, you see the same thing in RVing too. And in fact, that's probably one of the reasons why we got cringed on when we tried to communicate on one of these live shows that the um, American RVer folks were doing uh, is because uh, they're really into some of the groups like escapees or, or, or the one that really gets to me is uh, uh, full-time motorhome folks. And <laughs> that one's a limited group because if you don't have a motorhome, you can't even be in it. Um, I'm not against them, all that stuff, but you just got to realize that there will be some prejudices. Um, and I'm not necessarily, you know, pro, I mean, good, you know, good Sam's got some good things and, and, uh, uh, the different camping uh, memberships got some good things to them and stuff. And if they work for you, that's awesome. But if they don't work for you, that's awesome too. And if you don't care to be in Thousand Trails, or if you don't care to be in the uh, uh, Federal uh, Motorhome Association groups, that's okay. And if you don't want to be escapee, that's okay. And, and you just want to be independent like a lot of people like to be. Uh, and then there's, there's other groups like, uh, you know, you could be a member of uh, the Montana RVer group or are you part of Heartland group and all that stuff and if you enjoy that that's awesome but to judge people that because they're not in it is uh, kind of uh, sad <laughs> and um, some people love groups some people love community around them all the time and that's great and people need that attention and, they, and it actually is almost like a drug and I truly understand the, the purpose for it. But there's others that's like out there that's like, you know, just I'm out here. I love to be friendly. I like to meet you on the stuff. Other than that, leave me alone. Uh, I'll say hello to you and meet with you and have a cup of coffee on my terms. And so, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> it's interesting. But you see, it's, these are things that not only happen in an RVs or full-timing, 
you'll see it on these channels, the podcasts. Um, you know, they're always pushing their associations and their and their memberships and things like that. And and that's all right. They need to tell about them and stuff, but they shouldn't judge people because you're not in them. And uh, so. But you see the same thing whether you lived in a house too. Do you go to a certain church? Are you doing something for the community? Are you on the block watch? Um, there's you know things too being in a stick built home too. So it's it's not uh, both worlds have got their ups and downs and stuff. But uh, uh, don't uh, let your guard down no matter what you're doing. You could be in a cruising community and. In, I'm sure that there's a whole bunch of associations that they want you to be in too. And uh, if it doesn't work for you, great. And if you're judged by it, then those aren't friends of yours. And maybe, uh, the, you know, like I listen to organizations and, and groups and podcasts that I don't necessarily agree with the organizations that they want me to join and stuff. doesn't mean I'm not going to still listen to their shows. And, uh, and I'm not even all that much of an advocate for people that travel with children. I'm kind of torn about public schools, chapter schools, and homeschooling. And so, of course, I'm an older generation. That's okay. That doesn't mean that I have to condemn them or, or, or be upset with them. Um, I, I want to try to keep an open mind and, and can, you know, can keep my ears open of how that's working and, and maybe uh, change my view on it. So... I still have a view that it's not my cup of tea and I'm not endorsing it. At the same time, I'm not saying it's bad, but I, I'm concerned about it. And please keep me educated about, and I'm going to continue to watch folks that do that and say, you know what, I've been watching that for a year now. I'm going, you know, that's not a bad, you know, those kids are real sharp and they're doing some really great things. And But I've also seen the other side of it. I was like, maybe those kids should be in a public school because... They don't look like they're, you know, firing with all in, all cylinders. <laughs> so, who knows? <laughs> but I'm not firing all cylinders either. And like I said, very truthful show. So um, don't get us wrong, ever. We love RVing, but we also don't want to see you get brainwashed either. Uh, RVing is a great, great thing. And uh, I also believe that RVs are just not designed to live in in for a long period of time however i'll get people who get on my show and if i make a, or I make a statement like that they'll go well i've been in mine for 20 years well cool <laughs> that's great um probably had to do a lot of things to keep that thing uh in good shape to live in it for 20 years and um i'm not necessarily uh um one of those people uh, I really want to brag of the fact that I've been, a, you know, uh, living in a trailer or an RV for 20 years. Um, I, I'm a little more Americana, so I tend to be, you know, like, what did you do for a career? Did you, you know, how did you, well, did you do raising your children? All those kind of things. Uh, um, I tend to look at those kinds of uh, achievements as things that I'm looking for not necessarily whether you've lived in an RV for 20 years um, am I against it heck no I'm glad you've been happy and it worked out good for you but uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm more impressed by someone who you know wow they've owned their house for 25 years they get ready to retire they're gonna have a nice you know nice nest egg all this stuff that was pretty a big achievement to go through the system and 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 be patient and, and let their assets grow and now they can truly relax. And so the other thing we notice in the RV world and you see it more now is um, cheating life a little bit, trying to use the RV as an excuse to not earn your keep. And so uh, this is age once again. I get young people say, well, I don't want to wait till I'm retired before I can. Maybe I won't be healthy enough. And those are good arguments. At the same time, is um, if it wasn't for the fact that Sherry and I worked and we saved and we had 401ks and we did the process, we wouldn't have even the freedoms we have now. And, and that didn't go exactly as perfect as we would have liked it to do. But when we hit 65, we probably can full-time easily if we want to. 
and financially do it fine without having to try to start up a business, sell ebooks or sell books I've written and on vlogs and trying to sell products on the side and not pushing Amazon links to you so I can make extra money so I can stay on the road and cheat life. Um, I would rather see you say, tell me what's the next vocational school you're going to sign up for. Get a get a skill and a career and, and tell us how well you're doing working for an aerospace company and, and, and earning your money and saving your money and go ahead and buy that RV for part-time use and stuff. And, and, and that really impresses me. But to say, see a 24 year old cheating life and living, um, uh, on a tight budget and not in, enjoying the things that the United States have to offer, you know, Hey, you know, I mean, if you want to live in a little, you know, some people are forced to live in small places in Mexico or in uh, Japan, stuff like that. We're in America. We got elbow room. And so the American dream is a little different. So, but you got to remember, guys, this is the talk radio. Talk radio means we talk and bring up subjects that rile you up a little bit and make create comments and stuff. Do you want to show that this sits there and agrees with you all for one hour? That's not the show. So we're. <laughs> We're stimulating your thoughts and, and no hatred is there whatsoever. I am not hating upon it, whether someone's full timing or young or old stuff. We're just bringing up observations and stuff. Now on a personal level, things might be a little different where Sherry and I have different personal beliefs and you may too, but that doesn't mean I'm going to make comments to you that you're uh, like one of my shows. Somebody's uh, I know who it was, but I want to laugh because if I ever commented back and was trying to be nasty, I could do it too. But uh, I got grumpy old man. You sound like a grumpy old man. And it's like, I don't know, I'm a pretty happy dude. <laughs> and uh, I laugh a lot, enjoy life uh, and all that stuff. I just bring up subjects that make you think. That's all. And it might make you upset. And please leave nice comments professional comments and we'll talk about it even more and that's what stimulates each show and I've noticed when I do a show that just agrees with everybody and it's not controversial at all it hardly gets uh, very many views it doesn't get very much interaction so I found it putting a little bit of uh, zest into the show a little bit and talking about things that might push your buttons a little bit I've noticed f creates a fun show a show that you can enjoy, not one where I'm dictating to you that you've got to have this RV product or, or you've got to join this RV club. You've got to be part of the escapees or escapers and all that stuff. It's like, um, although those are all great pro shows and there's great products out there you should try out. I will tell you occasionally something that we use or try that's worked out really good and we'll leave out Amazon links to you and stuff like that. But if I had to depend on my shows and my links and my books and stuff like that, and we have books too. We have two books that we are RV secrets uh, uh, and had to live on a shoestring. Uh, uh, that'd be, I, I wouldn't like it. <laughs> tell you that for sure. Anyway, but I mean, uh, yeah, so there we go. So let's move on to some, something else. So I did want to do a, a, a shout out to one of our listeners, uh, Phil Sears, I believe is how you say his name. Uh, it was real nice of him. It was like, dude, are you going to do any more radio shows? Because I didn't say anything on the last radio show that uh, like I'd be stopping. And, I, and I've been kind of winging it. And so uh, thank you very much for your note. And uh, we've had other people asking about, you know, uh, wh wh where'd you go? <laughs> and, uh, and I actually noticed that our subscriptions and everything else has been growing. Uh, and our uh, uh, listening ship has gone up. And we haven't produced any new shows. So, of course, after this show, most people are like, grr. But uh, please understand we're... I feel like our show connects probably more with the 90, 85 to 90% of folks that are out there RVing, doing their thing and being happy and don't actually even have shows. And uh, I, do you know, I, I, we've had our shows for quite a while. We have flags and stickers and stuff on our cars and stuff. 
And I can still tell you that 80% of the people in our RV park have no clue about not only some of our shows, but any shows other than ours too that are even more popular. They just don't care. <laughs> it says, well, I don't know how many people have said, oh yeah, I think I've seen one of your videos, but they don't remember me, but they remember Sherry. And uh, so it's kind of funny. It's like, really? I do most of the shows and yet Sherry gets all the recognition. And that's fine. And it's cool. But uh, a lot of folks are just out here RVing, enjoying life, not caught up in all these clubs and organizations and not uh, caught up in the uh, channels and the podcasts and stuff. And occasionally catch some of our shows when they're trying to do a little research on trying to fix something. So if you have a, a channel that shows a lot of how-tos and stuff, um, you're bound to have a pretty good channel. And uh, uh, we've stuck with lifestyles um, because there's so many... Uh, shows out there, some great channels out there, RV Travel, RV Education, The Geek Folks. Um, there's a bunch of them out there, and they're really good shows. And they're teaching they're how to, a lot of how-to shows. And some folks out there specialize in wireless and things like that. It's like, well, why would we do another show to, uh, that I just knows there's not a lot of people talking about the lifestyles. And so when I talk about lifestyles, it definitely riles people up. Because there's so many different kinds. There's people with a well-to-do. There's one people that are trying to cheat life a little bit. There's others that are almost like what they call the e-beggar type. That are uh, almost like gypsies. There's others in the middle of the road. There's other pe people that are out there uh, doing contract work and have businesses and things like that. And the RV is a great tool for all that. So lifestyle is gigantic and really big. Um, but I can still tell you that 85, 90% of people are just your normal every day. Um, a lot of them are retired or part-time retirement type of thing where they use their RV for extended periods of time, take it back to their home and chill out in their own house until the weather starts getting bad and then they go south. Uh, most of them are doing that. And then the second most um, uh, that I see and they're not necessarily doing channels are people that are using their RV for their job. They're uh, a lot of contract workers, a lot of uh, um, temporary uh, nurse, you know, traveling nurses and stuff like that. A lot of that. Oh my gosh, you will not, uh, you'll be amazed at how many people are using their RV for their careers. So uh, yeah, and, and if you don't believe me, if you're in an RV park right now, go go meet some of the people that are in that RV park and find out what they're doing and why they're there. And you'd be like surprised, I'm really, really surprised. And uh, um, in fact, if you're just thinking about becoming an RVer, I would recommend that I, I'm sure that no matter where you live, there's an RV park. And I'm and, and there's not RV park, not mold, not. <laughs> Uh, mobile home parks, RV parks. Um, go to RV parks and park at the front and maybe if you have a dog or something, uh, go for a walk. And kind of pick like around 4 or 5 o'clock around uh, what they call a, uh, well, around the dinner time thing or happy hour time. Walk around and try to be so, super sociable. Say hello and try to score up conversations and meet the people that are in these RV parks. And, and it's going to be a little different. If you're in a major city and you go to an RV park, you'll find more of your contract workers and stuff like that. The farther out you go to the outskirts of towns and stuff like that, then you start finding the vacationer kind of people. Um, and and uh, if you're like in Washington State right now and people in RV parks are mostly likely to be contract workers and stuff like that because they're not up there because of the weather. Uh, if you're down here in Arizona, you'll really notice the difference. Uh, most of these people are vacationers or escaping the weather from their state. So I do highly recommend that you do your research on the Internet, of course. But remember that 15% of people that are different than the normal RVers and stuff and full-timers and stuff, uh, we're putting out shows and you kind of think that's how it really is. What you really need to do is go meet the real population and, and go talk to real people in RV parks and even take a, like Arizona, go fly down there for a week, 
uh, go watch the, some of these, uh, like our Mariners are down there. Go down there for that reason. Or, or NASCAR or something. Spend a week down here, but go to RV parks and go meet people and find out what they're doing and why they're there and what why they're here. And now, then you'll get the real, the real story. <laughs> Sound like a <laughs> Harvey did. And for the real story. But anyway, yep. So yeah, let's move on. So there you go, guys. No, you don't have to do an RVing in any certain way, form, or function. Just do it your way. And, uh, um, you know, and, and the things I bring up are just for conversation. I wish everybody happiness. I just want you to be happy and everybody else that deserves to be happy. And so if RVing is the choice for you, cool. And if it isn't, um, so be it too. But you need to know the truth. And that's, I hope that when you watch, listen to our show that you're hearing the truth and you're weighing things out. Um, are we against RVs and stuff? Absolutely not. Oh my gosh, we love our RV and we always will. Um, but uh, you will not find our show to be one that's going to be um, just uh, saying that's the only thing you can do. Uh, we want you to know all the different lifestyles. And so, yeah, um, that's really what we're all about. I really want to thank everybody for uh, listening to us. And uh, folks have been sending us really kind uh, messages. Um, for those that get angry or, or, or uh, stuff, all I ask is, Please, I'd love to hear your views, but just be professional. I'm certainly not being rude to anybody here. Uh, I'm just being open and honest, but I'm also being respectful. And I'm kind of hoping that you guys can do the same when you're writing to us. Uh, a lot of great things coming up, and uh, not only on RV Talk Radio. Uh, we've got some new things I will be bringing up. This was kind of a transition kind of show. Um, uh, at the same time, we've got a whole bunch of projects going on, so we're kind of juggling them all, but I didn't want to totally abandon the, this show. Um, and then do if you like fishing, we got that coming up. Lots of trigger grill cooking stuff coming up. Having a lot of fun with that. Uh, the latest video coming out, uh, you'll see after the show, is one uh, making jerky. Um, a little different than probably you see in some of the other shows. You might want to catch that show. Uh, we will have more boating stuff coming up and some other activities uh, coming up and maybe some new stuff that we're kind of contemplating on. So, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, bringing new stuff to the channel. Once again, that's why we're not RV Travel Buddy. That's kind of different. Um, we still have that. Um, but it's, uh, you, you notice our channel is called Outdoor Travel Channel. And it's the different kind of travels, whether it's road trips or boats or cruising or RVs and or flying somewhere. Uh, yeah, that stuff's coming up. And we also may have some stuff about over the border. Right now, the border's kind of shaky. So we're kind of like, eh, we might hold off on some of that for a little while. But uh, lots of stuff. So once again, thank you for listening. I'm Rob Scribner. Talk to you next time. Our shows uh, launch on Mondays. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks again. Bye now. Hey, thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. We hope we stimulated a little bit, and we hope you take the time to subscribe to our channel and to listen to some of our prior shows. Once again, thank you, and be safe out there. Bye now.